Welcome to this edition of Lift Every Voice. Lift Every Voice is a program of the Louisville Branch NAACP in which we seek to keep our community informed of what the issues are, the issues that are important to our African-American community, what we need to be doing to advance our community and make certain that we get the full benefit of our citizenship and membership in this community. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Jefferson County Public School Student Assignment Plan. And I have with me two very special guests. First, Mr. Ryle Cunningham, who is president of the Louisville Branch NAACP and a national board member and a longtime freedom fighter. And most of you, if not all of you in this community, if you don't know about Ryle, you haven't lived here long enough. Also with us is, is Michelle Patrick. Michelle Patrick is, pre is the chair of the Louisville Branch NAACP Education Committee and a retired educator in this community. So we've got a lot of brain power here today as we talk about the student assignment plan. Student assignment has been with Jefferson County Public Schools since the, the 1970s. It's gone through several revisions many different times in regards to what that assignment plan is. The plan was designed to help desegregate public schools in Jefferson County all across the county to achieve a balance racially, economically, educationally in those schools. And now we're going through a revision because the issue has been raised with the, the Kentucky State Legislature by several legislators. And as you know, the Kentucky Department of Education, in, as a part of its review of JCPS, has required that this body look again. So let's begin here with you. Ral, you've been involved with student assignments and, and, and dealing with JCPS for a number of years. Tell us what your view is on the plan at this point in time and what you what you may be looking for. First of all, I'm waiting and would like to see a final plan. Number one, it has not been done and it has not been presented to the board at this point. Now, what we have seen and what they have suggested are in some forms of a proposal. They've come up with a new concept, I think, called dual resides. And dual resides will be an integral part, I think, of the proposed plan. My opinion of dual resides is I would question if this is not another name for for neighborhood schools. So won't you won't you tell us in a little bit more detail what, what dual resides is so our audience will, will understand what we're talking about. Dual resides is a proposal by the staff of JCPS that would give West End students a choice which they have not which we have not had before. And that is a choice to one remain in their neighborhood and go to school or to go to schools outside of their neighborhood or to be bus to be to take transportation okay and, and it's only going to apply to middle school students and high school and students. high school students yeah. yes and that's dual resides basically and I think the dual resides will create a segregated school system, basically. Now, is that good or will it be bad? Okay, Michelle, what do you got to add to that? <laughs> well, as he said, this is the first time in the history of uh, the 40 years, I believe that's correct, that we've been in this situation with JCPS that our children will have a choice. My feelings about, I have no problem with choice, but my feelings again, I'm concerned about one-sidedness. Uh, that has been a problem with this system that our children have always had to carry the burden of busing. And Maybe that was a bad word. Maybe I shouldn't have said busing, but nevertheless. Yeah, it is busing. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's the students of West Louisville have carried the burden for we have. busing for 40 years. Yeah. So it's, it's nothing wrong with saying and, it. and it's the truth. It's the, well, and that's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. 
I figure if we're going to give children a choice, let's give everybody a choice, not just the children in the West End. Let's give them all a choice and not to one particular school. Mm -hmm. Choices all around. I remember as a teenager that I wanted to go to Shawnee and I did go to Shawnee mm -hmm. when there was Central, Mail, Manual, all those other schools. But I had a choice to pick. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like the idea of giving them choice, but I'm very concerned about who's going to be in those schools teaching mm -hmm. at that one particular school. Mm -hmm. How is money going to be allocated? Um, there's a whole lot of things that I'm concerned about that this plan has not truly addressed. Okay. Roughly, I think about Ryle, 10 years ago, the Louisville Branch NAACP did a study on the uh, student assignment plan in Louisville. Uh, as part of that study, looking at really the demographics of all of the schools, looking at the experience level of the teachers, uh, that study found that, that for in the schools that were in West Louisville, that more often than not, the teachers who were assigned were the least experienced teachers. Yes. Uh, found out in there in terms of resources available, those were not there. You know, do you, can you expound more on that in terms of what that study found? The study found inequities in the teaching assignment. As you said, those with less experience were the teachers that were found in the West End or in the West End schools. I'm trying, I'm having to go back and think <laughs> what the study also found in equities in the poverty level. Right, a concentration of poverty in the schools. Yes. Which is a big concern as we talk about student assignment. And that will be a major concern this go around in putting together a student assignment plan. Will it be, will our schools become predominantly African American and predominantly Title I or poverty level? And will they be concentrated in West End schools? Uh, as an educator, Michelle, you know well that concentration of poverty in schools is, in fact, a major hurdle for learning in terms of being able to, to do it. As Raul talked about, do you have any concerns about the concentration of poverty? And talk about how uh, the concentration of poverty impacts schools. Well, I, I think what happens the, um, with the schools, per se, is the lack of funding that comes in it mm -hmm. comes into that building um that's where my head is okay. uh will there be in if let's say let's pick a school like uh moppin will moppin if they are considered a title one school will moppin get the same amount of monies as a school in the east end would get that's my concern mm -hmm. Uh, will they have the same amount of equipment? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I noticed um, in our, uh, I'm going to go back a little bit, with um, with the reform. The reform said with the legislation that all schools would be equal, okay? And we were supposed to have a cadre of community people to go into all the schools and make sure that things are there in those schools that you would find in another school. That was never implemented. We never established the, that cadre of people. Being poor does not limit my intellect. Right, right. Okay. I, I, I don't see that. But I think the resources is the problem. If you're going to put one thing in one school, then you need to put it in all schools. Right. And I have seen disparities mm -hmm. um, in schools. I have seen them and witnessed them. Mm -hmm. And so that's m my concern. And, and Mr. Cunningham had us to look at 
Mecklenburg, is that right? Mecklenburg and uh, Seattle. In Seattle. And what they found, the and they found from those two studies, it had nothing to do with locale. locale. Mm-hmm. It had a lot to do with the people standing in front of our children. And I think that's the big, my one of my other pet peeves is who stands before my children and teach my children uh, has an effect on how well they learn and what they learn. Yeah, I like to, since she touched on Mecklenburg County and Seattle, the reason I had asked the education committee to look at those two school systems was that they were parallel with Louisville or JCPS at one point. Both of those school systems had voluntary transportation as a method of bringing about desegregation. Both of those schools retracted and went back to almost a neighborhood school concept. And I wanted to look to, I wanted us to be able to look at those two systems and to determine what effect that had on academic learning. You know, to, to that, one of the things that has not been really discussed is, you know, the student assignment plan or, or was really starting to desegregate schools. Yes. Get to. It is that if we go back to a dual resides and a significant number of the students in West Louisville, which is primarily African American, mm-hmm. will we in fact have resegregated schools in Louisville, Jefferson County again? And that, you know, do you, any of you know whether that question has been answered yet? It has no. not been. No, it has I not. mean, I think everybody knows it's going to be that mm-hmm. and assumes this that's going to take place, but I don't think there has been uh, any word coming from JCPS. Right. Additionally, in JCPS, one of, the, one of the big problems we have is the educational gap between African-American yes. students right. and right. white students in the community. Uh, and JCPS has been fighting this battle for years and has yet to uh, achieve parity or really truly address the gap still still exists. Does Is there anything in this student assignment plan that addresses that the achievement gap? I think what they're looking at is programs that deal with um, cultural competencies um, and and also looking at how our children, uh, well, our children uh, deal with things emotionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was looking up this morning, like, uh, well, what is the purpose of it? being educated and you'd be surprised what all these different educators say but the bottom line was for us to be productive citizens Mm -hmm. that's that's the bottom line but now the spin is on emotional and learning how to get along with people as well as reading writing and Mm -hmm. arithmetic it's like they have gone full circle to me Mm -hmm. with having that emotional part and understanding the cultural part for kids to learn different ways of learning. Uh, so often, you know, when I was teaching, we never looked at multiple intelligence. We never looked at gifted and talented. Plus our kids were never asked to be in those programs unless you were a parent that did a lot of this, yeah. your child would get put <laughs> in that program. Yeah. Yeah. Our children, mm-hmm. uh, on a whole, if they did not know that those programs existed, our babies didn't get in them. Well, now I see a switch to a switch to where they're concentrating more on multiple intelligence and a uh, gifted and talented. So our kids do uh, have those skills in order to get in those programs. But the, but the study that they they it was at MGT of America they brought in here who did a study on on the um, on on gifted and talented program mm-hmm. and they found that the me- the process or mechanism that JCPS was using for assignment of students was in fact deficient and recommended and suggested that JCPS change how yeah. they do that right because they only used it one area of gifted mm-hmm. and talented that was cognitive mm-hmm. that they, they didn't look at 
all the eras of multiple intelligence. If, you know, there's more to multiple intelligence than able, just than what they looked at. Okay. That was more just the cognitive process. Okay. You know, we talked, we talked about the, the, uh, uh, um, dual resides concept as one of the pieces of this, of the JCPS student assignment plan. There's also another piece, which is to change how students get assigned to magnet schools. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and well, first of all, and I, you know, I'm, I've never been a, a person that supported the magnet programs anyway, mm -hmm. because here again, our children were left out. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I worked at Mazik Middle School and that was a school within a school. Right. And so it was so unfortunate that many of the children that I had that was capable of being in the magnet program was not selected in the magnet program. Mm -hmm. And here again, it comes back to parents yeah. being aware of the programs that are there. Okay. You know, uh, you know, as we as we think about about this in terms of the dual resides gives an opportunity for African-Americans who are, in fact, in West Louisville to make another choice. But again, not all African-American students live in West Louisville. West Louisville. That's right. They're, in fact, across all across this community. Right. And there is the achievement gap is true in terms of African-American students versus white students, regardless of whether they come from. West Louisville or from other parts of the city. Uh, you know, and when I look at the, at the, uh, new student assignment plan, I see nothing that has been presented True. that says that will address how do you, how do, how will those African American students not in the two West. resides there or West Louisville get parity, get resources, in fact, to be able to address it? Any thoughts on that? It's, it hasn't been addressed. Mm -hmm. And I agree, you know, they've got to be addressed as Michelle continues to emphasize all schools, all students. It's got to be addressed. And I don't know how it will be at this point. I know that we have those community forums and we've had other all these different people coming in uh, and talking about instruction and um, looking at new ways of teaching. I think the accountability piece is missing because we have not seen in two years what gains our kids have made and not made. And it seems like to me, uh, that is something that we need to be as an organization right now clamoring on is the accountability piece. We have not had that. Mm -hmm. Now in October, if I can plug, right. no, November, if I can mm -hmm. plug Robert Moore and, uh, Ms. Carmen Coleman mm -hmm. will be on there plus Test scores, the embargo will be up and they will be on the community farm web, uh, a program. Maybe that night we'll see what's going on. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll have to ask. Yes, we will ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a definite. Yeah. We will ask. You know, one of the things you also have talked about is uh, what takes place in the classroom is directly dependent on who that person is standing at the front of the room. And also what I call, you know, everybody's talking about a principal. I call him the principal teacher mm -hmm. because the principal helps sets the tone and mm -hmm. the environment for what happens in that school is the JCPS has struggled with getting teachers who are able to teach uh, and get the best out of our kids. Uh, is there anything that you've seen in this new student assignment plan that will address making certain that we have culturally competent and capable teachers in the classroom so as to get the best out of our students. This goes back to this whole accountability matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, well, it's not in here, but they have spoke about the teacher, uh, the teacher le learning program mm -hmm. that Jefferson, Jefferson County Public Schools has produced. And uh, they coming up with that to work with the teachers in order to get them to be able to work with students 
And I think they also in this program talked about the REAP. Do you all remember yeah. reading mm -hmm. that? The REAP program, which helps them to identify, if I'm not mistaken, the challenges that are faced and what they have to do in order to address those challenges. Right. Those yeah. are the only thing I don't see in this plan where they're changing anything other than what they already have. Mm -hmm. And but here again, I thank you and I've shared this conversation. We need to start looking at universities and saying to universities, this is what our key, our, we expect from our new hires. Okay. And colleges are not doing that. If anything, they are consolidating everything in order to get kids out of college quicker. When I went, you had all kind of methods mm -hmm. courses. Right. You don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. So how can a teacher teach if she doesn't know how to teach? Right, right. So it shouldn't be up to Jefferson County Public Schools to reteach right. teachers. Right. You know, I, I guess one of the one of the things that came out of the Education Reform Act was the KTIP program, which right. is teacher yeah. engineer right. program, yeah. which was to teach. You know, what has happened over the years is, is the state legislature has defunded that. So it has gone away. So in terms of a program to teach new, help to new teachers learn how to teach has now gone away and, and is no longer there. Right. And it seems to me that we need to be, uh, we need to get rid of some of those legislators. <laughs> you didn't say that, but I did. <laughs> that don't understand the importance of education and what it's about when it comes to sitting down, teaching. They don't understand. No, I used to get so angry about that. It, they go to everybody else except people that actually work in the building. Mm -hmm. Right. Just one indicator of the legislators not understanding what the teaching and learning and educational process is about is they don't fund money for teach for textbooks for students anymore, which is absolutely unbelievable. Well, they, they want here again is this new way of thinking that they feel like uh, teachers don't need to teach out of a textbook. You need to bring resources from other areas. But what does a kid have to use at home mm -hmm. if he doesn't have a textbook? Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it's we get, we have our challenges in front of you know the the student assignment plans in years past were either three year, four year, or five year programs. Uh, they have not indicated to us how long oh. this particular program is. But if we're going to have accountability in there, how long do you think that should we should be looking at in terms of, of this program? What should it, what should the, the plan review and accountability process look like and how often should we review it? I think the number one thing, if I may, is how well the kids are doing. Wasn't it supposed to be reviewed every year? And what, what happened to that process? Well, they, they, there is no there is no every year review process in JCPS. It, it has gone by the wayside. Yeah. And so, you know, part of the commitment in terms of looking at at, at dual resides, an annual review would be very beneficial to tell you what is going on. You can make some correction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that at least my thinking is one of the things that we ought to be looking at is seeing the JCPS as mm -hmm. we raise many other questions about this is what's going to be the review process. And what the mechanism is going to be. Uh, you know, we talked about this program. I guess our last time we saw a revised version of it was September of 2020. Right. There has not been one since then. Uh, the question is, is how do how how should community input be provided in, in this process to, to make this really a community program and not a JCPS staff program? Well, we have all these wonderful, beautiful libraries around here. We need to have some meetings in those libraries about this to make parents aware of what's about to come. And we don't even know when it's going to happen. Well, and we've got to put emphasis on parental involvement, yeah. which has not been done. Secondly, for the community to be involved. I guess, Raymond, it's up to organizations like the NAACP. We try to get our, mem our members to attend school board meetings. And we've got to continue to put emphasis on 
community involvement because it's crucial. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about student assignment. We're talking about will our schools be resegregated? This, these are all issues. We're talking about the gap. Mm -hmm. These are all issues that are important. And now, although it's not involving student assignment, whether you're going to have, what's the SORs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or security. Security resource off SROs, yeah. In our school system. Right. So. The community has got to be involved in every aspect of the school. So we're getting close to the end of our time in regards to this. Uh, let's do, with Mich Michelle, is there what anything you'd like to leave with the public in regards to student assignment or any of the work that the Education Committee is doing? Well, the Education Committee right now is uh, listening to the we have series of meetings with other organizations. Uh, we get ready to finish up on the 30th with the Pritchett Committee and to, uh, they're giving us a lot of information that will help us write our position paper for the NAACP. That's what we're doing. We've done the research. Now we brought some other people in and they're giving us some, uh, some data. So we'll be able to write our position and present it to the executive board of the okay, NAACP. Thank you. Well, well, I think Michelle has outlined what the NAACP, what the Education Committee will be doing in the future. We'll be, we will examine thoroughly what the final proposal of the plan is as it's presented to the board. And we will make the public aware of what our positions are. Okay. Well, thank uh, both Raul and Michelle for being with us today as we've talked about the student assignment plan. The NAACP needs to hear from you in regards to what it is, you, your reaction, what you're expecting, things that we should be looking at as it relates to student assignment. But that's only the beginning. We're involved in a number of things in the education arena, the political arena, the civil rights arena, the economic arena, business arena. We're also involved. And what we and to what contact us, you can in fact call our office at 502-776-7608, or you can email us at Louisville Branch at L O U N A C P dot org. Send us and tell us what you think. Or you can visit our we our website, which is L O U N A C P dot org to tell us what's going on and what's and of course you can always visit our office and we're located at twelve fifty four Catapa Court. This is the Little Branch NAACP with our program, Lift Every Voice. And when we lift every voice, we're able to impact and make a real difference in our community. Thank you for being with us.